Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, run it back. We are here back in studio. Happy Monday morning. You doing all right down there? Come on, man. <laughs> What's going on? We all have watery eyes and runny noses. It's LA, baby. Yes, this is running back. That is Stadium Insider Sham Sharania with the sweet, sweet jacket. Uh, Chandler P and I rocking the red, and Lou Will down there. Do we look pale, or is it the red, or what? Why do we? Look I mean, so we are. Pale? Oh. You're not pale. I'm pale. You're always tan because you know you live that good life. Um, we've got breaking news right off the top. Oh. Who knew, Shams? We're staring Give at you. Give it to us, Shams. What is going on? Grayson Allen, four years, $70 million contract extension with the Ooh. Phoenix Suns. That mm. takes him under contract through 2027, 20, 28 season. And he's someone that the, that the Suns acquired in a trade from the Bucks. It was part of that big Damian Lillard trade. Uh, <laughs> uh, DeAndre Ayton went to Portland. Damian Lillard, obviously, to Milwaukee. And Phoenix ended up with Yusuf Nurkic and Grayson Allen. And I think Grayson Allen was someone that was underlooked in that deal. Uh, people kind of, he, he went under the radar, but this season, almost 14 points a game, almost four rebounds, almost three assists. He's shooting almost 50% from the field and 46% from three-point range. So he's had a big season. He's capitalized off all the open looks Kevin Durant, Brad Beal, and Devin Booker have given him. And now the Suns are the sixth seed, and Grace Allen has been a big part of that. And he's been, dare I say, <laughs> less hateable. Yeah, has played less dirty. Yeah, less, less dirty. Like he's like a different man. Well, it's funny because we thought this Phoenix Suns team on paper was going to explode. They're going to be so good. They're going to be in a home court advantage team, and and they haven't been. But Grace Allen, like Sean just said, he's taken advantage of all these open looks. He's never got this many wide open standstill threes. He takes good shots. He takes high percentage shots, and he's took he's took advantage of it. So this is I'm, I'm happy for him. He's found a home here. Hopefully this big three or you know stays together so yeah. he can still flourish within this offense, but. That's a huge deal for him. Carlos Boozer. You like that? No, you don't like that? <laughs> That's a beetle messing with me. I know. I was like, his eyes are bothering uh, yeah, me. Yeah, I'm having bad like allergies. Like a, uh, allergic Everyone, reaction down They should feel so, sorry so for us. So with Grayson Allen, though, I mean, you two played on some really good teams. I mean, obviously, Chandler, you benefited early in your career with playing with James Harden. For Grayson Allen, how much do you think playing with those three guys? Like, he's getting more open shots, more open looks than he's ever got. Oh, it's the best case scenario for him because he's not a guy that's going to go and have the ball in his hands, not going to create. He can, but when you're in a system like this now, again, now you're going from coming off screens, pen downs, running around, to literally stand still, wide open threes, just because Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, they draw so much attention that he's a knockdown shooter. He's had a career year. He's one of the elite shooters in the NBA. His percentage is up there. So, again, <clears throat> you can put a really good shooter on a bad team, but if he's taking tough fadeaways and contested shots, he's not going to have the percent in the year that Grayson Allen had. So again, just by playing in this offense with this much firepower, he really took advantage of it because they, they're going to double team those guys. They're going to blitz them in pick and rolls, and he's going to be one of the guys on the other end to have wide open threes. Grayson Allen, congrats on the monies. Uh, it did the whole entire NBA season. 81 games, and this last one is where it all came down to. Shocking, really. Um, Thunder beating the Mavericks Sunday. Mm. They clinched the number one seed in the West uh, because they did have that tiebreaker over Denver. First time in NBA history that three teams entered the final day of the season tied for the conference lead. Uh, youngest one seed in history. And now that they have the one seed, I wonder. I mean, look, we've spoken of this team almost all season long, like house money, you're playing with house money. And here they are. They kept it. They are in that one spot. Does that raise your expectations for them now? Not to me. I, really? I think that, I think they're still playing with house money because they're such a young team. The expectation level isn't there. They haven't built anything for fan bases to feel like they should be be pushed forward. So them getting that number one seed, I still feel like they're in, they're still in a cele uh, celebratory space with the fan bases and, and as far as you know public opinion goes. And so. I think anything good happens with OKC, they're still in good shape. Yeah, it's interesting because obviously with the number one seed, with the season they've had, expectations are there. But like Lou said, this team is so young and they're still in the process of building something so big that it's almost like even if they lose and they make it competitive, it's, oh, there's always next year. There's right. next year. Everyone's a year better. Jalen early Williams. in this process for them. It's still so it's fresh crazy. and early. Now, again, if this happens, if they happen to get knocked off you know, in the first round here, I think the, now the expectations change. Are they real? Can they do it when it matters? Next year, all, all of a sudden, yeah, there's pressure. This year, 
No one expected them to be here. No one even knew how to say their coach's name. <laughs> and now they're the one seed. The guy's going to get coach of the year. And, and all of a sudden, so there's still not that high of expectation. There's more. There's higher expectations for like the Warriors and the Lakers that are in the play in yes. than the Oklahoma City Thunder with the one seed. That actually makes no sense to me. It's crazy. When we say it out loud. But here's the thing. The MVP case, it has been Jokic, Jokic, Jokic all season long. And now we find ourselves in a predicament because SGA is the top dog. Um, should we be talking about him? What's the case here? Last season, this was a play-in team in the NBA, the OKC Thunder, where they, they did not make the playoffs. And now you transform this organization, which has been the last couple of years rebuilding, retooling in the lottery. And they're the number one seed, really out of nowhere, the youngest team in NBA history as the number one seed. And Shea Gills Alexander, most 30 point games in the NBA. He's tied for the league lead in steals per game. So he's doing it on both ends of the floor. And, and the fact that he's been able to lead this, this team uh, after years and years of losing uh, to this level, he's the face of a franchise and he wants the MVP. He's spoken about it, hmm. how much this would mean to him. He, he's a guy that's become one of the faces of the NBA. And I think he, he's, he's done a lot in terms of solidifying his potential MVP status. I mean, there's an. What's crazy is me and Lou all year long. Actually, not all year uh -oh, long. Oh, he's month. giving you attitude right now, so I don't know. <laughs> no, we no, said no, what's no, crazy is what's it gonna take for SGA to get the MVP? Yeah. We said number finish with the number one seed. So yeah. again, I think it came down to literally the last game, and they've had a great season. I don't think you can look at it like last year they were a play-in team. They're this many games better because that's we're, we're not doing the MVP the last two seasons. We're doing that's this fine. year from start to yeah. finish. So I don't think you can look at like the progress that their team has made that he's made. I think you look at the stats, and by the way, he's got a really good case. I think now with Luka the way he's playing, with Jalen Brunson the way he's playing, if we're talking about the best team in the conference, they finished the best team in the, in the Western Conference in the last day. Boston Celtics have been the best team in the conference all year long. So if we're gonna if we're gonna judge off that, then does not just Jason Tatum have a we case don't even as mention well? Tatum. We don't even talk about no. him. We're talking about well. Luca, who's the fifth seed. We, you know, what I mean, we talk about I like Jalen Brunson, who's obviously the second seed, but like we're not even talking about Jason Tatum, who's dominated the mm -hmm. Eastern Conference, who averages 27, eight and six on a very efficient. But what so. about the plateau we've seen from SGA though? Like to go from that <clears throat> far down all the way to number one, we it's know we're losing. This is a team. What a couple years ago they had the largest loss in NBA history, and now two years later they're the number one seed. He, his numbers are obviously. One of the, you know, up there for the best. Nikola Jokic, we know what he's capable of. He's won back to back MVPs already. They've been a top seed already. I think for OKC, this is something that's unique. And I think you, you have to reward something like this. You'd and, think they'd be excited to give it to someone different, anyways. Yeah. yeah, and Chandler, we also said another thing. The number one seed was OKC's to lose all year long. <laughs> so no matter what happened in between game one and 82, they finished with the number one seed. Yeah. It's on the back of SGA. This reminds me of Steve Nash and Shaq. Right? A lot of people thought that Shaq should get the MVP years and years ago when Steve Nash got it. I think SGA gets it with this number one seed. Even though these other guys have very gaudy numbers, 30 and 6 in a number one seed, most 30 point games, <clears throat> uh, league leader in steals. I hmm. think that's where Think about well. this MVP race. It's, <clears throat> it was Joel's to lose early. Yep. Then he goes then down. He then, hurt. like, for, like, a month straight, everyone's talking about, you even admitted, oh, it's Jokic's. I'm switching. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Now, I'm all SGA of a sudden, trade. SGA, Luka <laughs> has this crazy month. Jalen Brunson's had 40, I don't know, for, like, th three straight weeks. So, like, really there's, all these, there's all these guys that now have just made this last-minute push to make this really interesting. Because I thought it was Jokic, and I thought it was done. Right. Same. And by the way, he's had an unbelievable year. He's had an historic so where year. Where are you stats. officially now? I'm give still, us, give us I'm your still Jokic, official, but, unofficial vote. Jokic, but I have zero problem with SGA winning it. But I think it's going to still be Jokic. I think the I think the voters made up their mind a month ago. I know, and that's what bothers me because and, I feel like if I had a vote, I I might change that. And everyone was talking about how it's done, so we're almost moving on now. Okay, defensive player of the year. Okay, who's going to get the one seed? But now all of a sudden, SGA is in the one seed. He's the best player on the best team in the West. You gotta so it's adapt. Like, you almost got. You have to look at that. They haven't voted yet, right, Shams? Like they're. They Votes are this week, I believe. Yeah. That's yeah, the problem, so Shams. Everybody already had their mind made up a month ago. Like, but did they already mean? turn so, their so votes in? So how, do, how serious do we take the votes if they don't let it play out? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I So you vote. should who not do, vote until the yeah, day of. Need someone, oh, we, need, we need votes on this panel. Oh, I'm sure they'll look at us and take us seriously as basketball <laughs> like, I'm sure we'll hear from the league today. But I will say, what <laughs> the Thunder have done is probably the most impressive, outside the Knicks, too, finishing two, which no one expected. There it is. The Thunder's season is unbelievable. With the, with the emergence of SGA, which we just looked at his stats, he was really good last year. His numbers, besides scoring by .8 or something, are <laughs> all up. 
His team has won more. So it's 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 the, how crazy that this team has been so dominant with the average age of 22 years old, That's and he's nice. their leader and he's their guy. Like it, it's unbelievable. You can't not take a real look at him winning MVP. What are the odds? Is because I mean I can't put money on it now. Anyways, dang it. Because we're in the state of California. We're in, not in a free state. Um, let's move on. Things happened yesterday. This was one of them. The Knicks took an overtime to beat Chicago. They finished the season at 50 and 32, best since 2012 13. And the Bucks lost. So the Knicks are the two seed. Milwaukee gets the three. This is obviously one of those questions. It's, it's, it's fun for us to argue, but as a team, you probably try not to think about it, Lou. You think they're going to end up regretting this two seed now that you're going to face, you know, either probably Philly or Miami? Yeah, they messed up. <laughs> they should have let DeMar DeRozan go lay that <laughs> basketball <laughs> up that game. They messed up. Look, they've made their role tough, and and that's okay. And, you know, Thibodeau teams, they, they like to go to the rough route, and so... This is an opportunity for them to really prove themselves. This is gonna be, this is gonna be a rough road to take with a with a healthy Joel and B back, um, with Miami Heat and how they always find a mm. way to to figure it out come playoff time. You know they'll probably get one or two of those matchups if anything crazy doesn't happen in this uh, in the play in and and the Knicks are gonna be right there waiting. But this is go this is gonna be a tough road. I, I would have preferred them to stay at three or four. <clears throat> I'll tell you this: other teams I think will regret it. With, with Tibbs, there's no way he he's never gonna regret regret winning, right? So he's, he leaves his guys in at the end of games. They're blowing teams out last week. You still got DiVincenzo playing. You still, <laughs> Josh Hart literally didn't come out for the first like 19 or 20 minutes of a game and yeah. they were up 20 the entire first half. Well. He's one guy that doesn't care about that. But yeah, when you look at the big picture of matchups and stuff, I think when now that they're set, damn, I'd rather face you know the Pacers than, than either Philly or, or Miami. But again, you can't you can't play with the basketball guys. You can't try to lose games. You can't you can't do that at this point of the season. You've worked all year long creating these habits, trying to win basketball games. You can't just throw that away because you want the Pacers instead there's of the There's no peak. way. Like, yes, you can. But there's a that team A lot of teams team are can. doing it. A lot of teams. You can rest. Are, well, you can rest, but they didn't even it. rest. They so didn't they even rest. They're, they're, these guys yeah. are playing 40 so, minutes. Uh, I mean, so Dave and Jenzo played like 50. Work out, <laughs> it's unbelievable. If, if this doesn't work out for the Knicks, since let's say they, they lose in the first round uh. because of facing being, Joel Embiid. For play, facing Joel Embiid. Right. Do we get a serious look at maybe this is in... No, I think they run this team back regardless. I think they, oh, the fact yeah. that they no, finished I'm, second. The and team they, for sure. Do we look at the coach? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I don't. I'm not calling for Tibbs' job, but I'm just saying he no has way. he has a history of going the going along. Like you just said, 19 straight minutes for for guys, and at some point but you got to play a little chess. Is it me, or do you think these guys though specifically feel like they sort of match? Like I feel like this coach player matchup feels right. Well, like, again, I can't speak enough about, like, DiVincenzo and Josh Hart. These guys are perfect players for Tibbs. Right. They play defense, they play hard, they cut, they move without Hustle. the ball. Those kids are perfect for this system. And then, again, Jalen Brunson is now an absolute star. The guy's <laughs> had 40 points. His over-under in games is, like, 33 and a half. <clears throat> and I keep going under, and the dude just keeps going over. That's it's on it's you. unbelievable how good he is at basketball. <laughs> so I think the system of it is working. Again, we always talk about how talented, how good the Milwaukee Bucks are. The New York Knicks, without Julius Randall, who was their best player pretty much going into this season, hmm. have finished in second in the East. That's Weird. unbelievable. It's almost like Mitchell Robinson. In Mitchell Robinson out uh, yeah. most of the I, year. I was like about the, to say, the adversity they faced. Out, Julius Randall still out. You know, yep. so give these guys credit. They've played their ass off and they've put themselves in a position to earn a number two seed. <clears throat> However, it just it just failed that they're going to have to. They're probably going to face yeah. a very tough matchup. It's not over, Lou. You're talking about no, it like I'm, it's I'm, over. No, I I still like the I still like the Knicks a lot. I think they got enough to win uh, win a series against these teams. But if you had to pick a, another matchup, I'm sure they would have. Yeah, and the the development of like Hartenstein filling yes. in for the bigs, the McBride getting a little. Bag and him Been playing fun. well, adding vets like Bogdanovich, they really rounded this team. And then the addition of OG, obviously, their record is insane with them. Yeah, it's, it's silly. It's 20 and 3. Um, it's going to be fun. Uh, the Bucks, though, will, as the three seed, now face the Pacers. And the Pacers are 4 and 1 against Milwaukee this season. So <laughs> we know a lot of the drama that's come from that one, uh, the in season tournament, all that good stuff. The Bucks losing in the first round. Like, fair, maybe before know. Giannis, that was a silly question. Uh, but here we are, not sure what's going to happen there. <clears throat> Could you see a world in which they go out? Based on the based on the records, I don't I don't see it. I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on it if I had if I had some money to bet on it. I wouldn't. But Pacers are four and one. They they look like they like this matchup. So this one is going to get interesting to me. But I don't I don't see the Bucks losing in this. I one. would bet on this one. 
you would take Which the pictures, you, I yeah, think. Yeah, I would take the pictures. She's off the books. She's never I've been bo- off the books even before Giannis got hurt. I though, think, again, maybe I'm just blinded by, like, the names and the talent, just like the Phoenix Suns in the West. I, I'm blinded by the talent on the on I the bucks. I like the way you were, like, literally. Yeah, you out. actually acted that out. That was very weird. <laughs> I think they're, I think Damian Lillard, they, ever, they have the best two players on the court every single game if Giannis and Damian Lillard are on the court that series. I think that enough alone That's is great. That's what makes it sad. They have the defensive potential. They have guys like Crowder and Patrick Beverly. And, again, I still think they're the, the biggest threat to the Boston Celtics. I love what the Knicks have done. I love these matchups. This is going to be the most competitive playoffs I think we've seen in a long it's time. I think amazing. there'll be zero sweeps. I think a lot of series will go to six or seven games. Ooh, I think they'll it. all be competitive. Not getting all that. I want all Which of that Which is tough because that means we got to keep working until like, j- late fun. June. You know what? We're here anyways. I'd rather <laughs> be working than sitting around. But this uh, is going to be insane. <laughs> one through one to eight is going to be just as competitive as four and five matchups. It's really, it's really nuts. Did we just jump off the Tyrese thing? I feel like we're not giving him any love. Did something happen there? Do we not? Are we not keeping Tyrese? It got quiet for Indiana. I thought after that, uh, after the in-season tournament, I think the the Indiana Pacers settled into being, you know, a five or six seed type hmm. of team, and they just kind of cooled off a little bit. And you talked about it earlier in the season, like you know how hard it is to beat a team this many times. So they're four and one against this team. Yeah, they're gonna beat them four. They're gonna beat them eight times this season. Yes. Like that is really really hard to do. I know, and that's what's gonna make. You want a great. friendly wager? Yes. All right. I don't know what what are we betting before I don't, I, I don't trust you. <laughs> Lou, I don't know, but you Tom, y'all are witnesses you when we figure out what we bet for. Um, this contact. All right, obviously Giannis is the gazillion dollar question here, Shams. Is there a world in which we see him in game one? He's having daily rehab, daily treatment. It's a calf strain. It's a real injury, is a non-contact, really his first big non-contact injury that he's had when he collapsed on the floor with that calf injury just about six days ago. Um, but there is, I'm, t- I'm told there is real doubt about his status going into the series, his status for game one very much up in the air. He has this superhuman ability to heal. We saw in the <laughs> 2021 finals, uh, the, the people around the Bucks felt he should have missed several weeks with a hyperextended knee. He ends up only missing about a week, comes back, plays game one. So he's shown, and I think everyone around him, everyone around the Bucks, no one wants to rule him quite out yet. We're still six days away, Sunday, game one. We're still some time away. No one really wants to rule him out. But that would mean 12 days in between the injury and game one for a calf strain to that level. Um, you have to be very careful. And I spoke about it last week. Giannis has had multiple injuries on that leg. He had Achilles tendonitis. He had hamstring injury as well. And now the calf. So the stakes are high for the Bucks. We know that. But the stakes might even be higher for Giannis and his career because if you come back too too quick from an, from a calf, right. we know where that leaves you with your body. So I think the Bucks have to be careful. I think Giannis has to be careful. But listen, if he's healthy, if he if he can go, he's going to go. But I think there is some level of concern here going into the weekend. I got a question for you. If there's no Giannis in any of the games, hmm. who wins the series? Mm-hmm. Pacers. I don't know. I think the Bucks can still beat them you without know, but Giannis. You, you know want to make another bet? How many bets are we making on the same series? All right, this is going to be easier. You know what's interesting <laughs> about this playoffs, though, that's going to make it very exciting? I don't think there's one team that feels good or comfortable about their matchup. That's right. I no. think everybody is on high alert. Which what about is amazing. Boston? Who, oh, who we get? Boston's is on one seed. They no, get, congrats. You get the Heat and exactly. the 76ers. It doesn't matter. I think they might be sneakily like the most stressed because of the expectation and where they seem to always run into a wall. Like Cleveland, Orlando, they both think they're going to win. Milwaukee Pacers, they both think they're going to win. Like it. Okay, this is like awesome. it's, so, Minnesota's so Phoenix. I think anybody, Phoenix is. I think Phoenix is over the moon that they drew the Minnesota Timberwolves <laughs> in the first round. Like you know what I mean? Like, if anybody that has pressure on them, it's the Boston Celtics yeah. because they've been so much better than everybody else this Mavericks, year. Mavericks Clippers, they both think they're going to win. There See, is to no... me, that feels, that feels even. <laughs> yeah, like there's, I like that one. There is no team that's like, all right, fuck yeah, we got this. Like, <laughs> yeah, like no, they're already team. moving on to round yeah, two. Like, like, there's no looking ahead. For round two. There is no looking ahead. That's why it's, that's why it's important to, to have Giannis out, out on the floor. You can't yeah. afford to lose one of these games and let them get an extra couple of days. from You know, because usually get from game one and game two, you probably get an extra three or four days. Good Lord, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's why it's two months for the playoffs. And, <laughs> and by the way, the Bucks win this series. They're super confident next series against the Knicks. So like it just it, just, it doesn't matter. Like I mean, they're, they're, it, it is be. so. I'm just saying it is so level and it's so even and competitive that every team thinks they really have a chance. What are we betting? You needed to come up with something. 
We're not really betting. We've been betting all year. Nobody's betting. No, no, we are betting. I've been I've been strong about bucks. this Milwaukee take. A hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. How about you pay me ten thousand? <laughs> I pay you a hundred. It's that's fair. That's, that's a, proportional. That was a, that was a uh, what's what's the spread? Yeah. What do we do? Just, just betting who wins? It's a ridiculous spread. It's a money line. <laughs> <It's> a money <laughs> line. Good Fine. lord. Uh, keeping it in the West, we go Lakers. They beat New Orleans. I mean, it really came down to yesterday. So they're the eight seed, uh, which then sets up a rematch with New Orleans on Tuesday for the play-in. Wah, wah, wah. So we can play the shoulda again game because should they, in a perfect world, have lost so that they could have avoided playing the Nuggets in the first round, Chandler? I mean, it, these no. are hypothetical. Not, not, no, because you can't risk laying down and having a one game That's to determine your series. Point. Maybe if it was a series, sure. But no, just one game, who mm. knows what happens? Who knows if someone goes down? Who knows if you just happen to have a bad shooting night and that's game, your season's over because you laid down and wanted to you know, play your cards the way you thought they were going to play out? You can't do that. But I do like the Lakers uh, against New Orleans. I think this is what it comes down to. This is what they wanted. They worked all the way up to the, getting the series. They don't want to have to go and play again with their season on the line. So I do like the Lakers in this, and I do think this is a matchup that they like as well. And we're looking at a completely different Lakers team from two weeks ago, right? And that's what that's that's mm-hmm. one of the benefits of having a, a a veteran team. They turned the switch on. You're starting to see a different version of the of the Los Angeles Lakers. They're guarding. LeBron James is playing mm-hmm. at a high a high pace, playing with pace in a, in the open court. So if if I'm them, I, I keep on with my momentum and just keep going. But let me tell you this: if it did happen, to, if it panned out where they lost to New Orleans and then they beat you know the Warriors. <laughs> I think they would be a lot happier playing the Thunder in the first round than the Nuggets. I would so yes, so. if it worked out that way naturally and organically, yeah. where they lost trying to win, sure. I think they, right now, if they could pick Nuggets or Thunder, you they're just gonna don't put yourself in a position where you got to win one game. That's what I'm saying. You're not gonna so try. Hard. You're and, trying to yeah, win this now game. Now your back is against the wall. Now you're putting pressure on yourself. You are fully trying to beat New Orleans and play the Nuggets. Yeah, you don't if want to play New Just make sure you get in. Yeah, if not, then and it works out to where you then beat Sacramento or Golden State. Fine, then you get the Thunder. Great, I think you're a little bit more confident. But you can't at this point of the season with one game on line, you can't do that. I mean, we, this is—it's just setting up perfectly. Anthony Davis, though, did leave the game in this one. Shams, uh, is he—is he good to go by Tuesday? There's no doubt he's going to play. He said after the game, "I'm gonna play." <laughs> he tweaked his back, but listen, this has been something that's been reoccurring. These things can happen from any given moment, any given step you take, jump you take, and we saw it. We've seen it already this season, and he had it last night. Uh, but his hope is to play the games. It's a quick turnaround. Tuesday in New Orleans uh, for the seventh seed. And New Orleans isn't going to be a, a slouch either. I like, hope not. Since Ingram went out, CJ has been in rhythm. Zion looks great. Valanciunas has been great. Murphy's been great. So they they are they are going to present a challenge for the Lakers, no doubt. We got to stay out here for one second too, because Kawhi, <laughs> obviously the big one, he's playing. Yeah, he's good. Well, three weeks of rest that is basically what it's going to end up being by game one time. Uh, there is cautious optimism within the Clippers that he's been, he's been healing up, getting right, going into game one. He's going to hopefully for them do more and more this week and get ready and get back on the court. So that's, that's the word that I have. But we have, yes. we have a resident Clippers inside right here. My credible source, which is my two eyes, <laughs> Kawhi plays game. Wow. <laughs> what did you, what did you see sword. with your eyes here? I don't know. I just looked at him. He looked healthy to me. Three weeks is almost too much. What? I'll take that's, almost the rest. Like that's, now you're shaking off rust the first couple of games back. Almost. I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to roll out like fat bastard for that first day. <laughs> three weeks. Like, no, let's go. But that's what mortals would do. He is not one. Uh, quick break. When we come back, <laughs> we will be joined by T-Wolves point guard Jordan McLaughlin. There he is. He's ready. He can hear us. It's perfect. Run it back. Run it up. 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 Oh no, man! We might have found his only three dunks. Oh, oh no, 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 Apologize before. Nope, I said what I said. <laughs> he got three yes. dunks. So he got three dunks. So I think I just saw all of them right there. Yeah. I, I had two dunks in one game against the Clippers. Yeah. And I think uh, I read somewhere. Uh, I got like I got like 14 career dunks. Eat it, so Lou. Don't do me like that. There we go. Hold well, that, Lou. Well done. Yeah. Let's I'm work. just hating on the small guys dunking, yeah. man. I miss it. That's all. I just miss it. Good lord. Respect. All right. Respect. Uh, congratulations, by the way, on an awesome season with three seed. You guys finished, and, and I know it was like a lot of movement going on there. So you get Phoenix. 
Here's the thing, though. They won all three of their regular season meetings, each of those by at least 10 points. I mean, you guys are in the moment. Are you, are you hoping as the game's going on? Are you even thinking about the possible scenarios so that you perhaps don't get a Phoenix? Um, I mean, we talked about it before the game, but, you know, you're going to have to see whoever you see. And uh, at the end of the day, we're ready to compete with anybody. We got a few days to, uh, you know, look at the film and figure out what we need to do uh, in order to win this series coming up. It's kind of crazy you guys have to turn around and do this again. Yeah, what, what does have to change for you to win a matchup with these guys? Yeah, something, I mean, something we've talked about um, all, you know, the last, since the last All-Star break um, is just getting off to better starts. Uh, we've kind of been struggling at the start of games. And I think that's something that will help us um, throughout the game is just getting off to a better start. I do love when there's some extra motivation thrown in um, through the actions of others. So Bradley Beal says something, right, to the bench. I, I don't know what's going on here. It's the Suns timeout. Everybody gets worked up. Ant gets worked up. Coach gets worked up. What is going on here? And did they? do you even need the extra motivation? My man Finch wanted all I mean, the smoke. I right mean, out there. <laughs> Finch is ready to fight. Yeah, Finch, he's super competitive, man. And uh, he's just, you know, looking for our backs, and we got his back as well. So I don't know exactly what was said, but, you know, it, it sparked us a little bit. We tried to go on – we went on a little bit of run right before halftime and then carried it over a little bit um, in the second half. But we just weren't able to get over that hump. But yeah, like, like I said, we're competitive. Coach Finch is competitive. This organization is competitive. And uh, we're going to figure it out for hey, sure. This has happened before with Finch. He was my assistant in Houston. He would always really? like get into it and talk shit like to the, the players that would look I at I love the, that. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> Finch is the yeah, man. He don't, he so don't you back like down that as a player? Oh, okay. he gets you going. He will not back down. It could be LeBron. It could be, it could be anybody. He's going. He's talking shit back. I like it. <laughs> Jay, obviously your teammate Anthony Edwards has had an incredible season, averaging 26, <laughs> 5, and 5. I mean, just unbelievable year. What's yeah. it like watching him play, being a teammate of his, and do you feel he's the number one, number two? Is he a top five player in this league right now? Absolutely, man. The, the aura and the charisma, he carries himself every single day. Uh, the kid is special, man. Uh, there's the things he does on a nightly basis, we all just look at each other on the bench like, there's no way he just did that. Like the block in Indiana, the dunk in Utah, like the list goes on and on. And, and that kid is special and he's going to be special <laughs> for years to come in the NBA. Jordan, I'm a big Anthony Edwards fan. He's probably my favorite player in the NBA right now. I love what he does on both sides of the, of the floor, plays defense, mm -hmm. plays offense. Your teammate Jaden McDaniels said he's very similar to Michael Jordan in comparative to, to the GOAT. Do mm -hmm. you see like do you see comparisons there and, and you know do you agree with that comment? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, the, the things he does, uh, the way his work ethic, uh, when he's working out, he's he's always competing. I mean, the biggest thing with him is his availability. Like that man plays through all his minor injuries, major injuries, um, and then when you see him in the post and he he hits his little shimmy fade away, uh, pivot pivot, like it all emulates Jordan for sure. So he's he does he plays a lot now. What's he like in practice? Like, is he out there on the floor grinding? Is he talking trash? Is he going at dudes in practice? Because MJ's famous for being super, super intense in mm -hmm. practice. Yeah, he, bring, he brings it every single day. You know, he, he may say, like, oh, I don't got it today. And as soon as one, one play happens where somebody scores on him, somebody <laughs> talks smack or Coach Finch gets him going, that's when he turns it up. And then you, he brings his energy. <clears throat> He's out there competing for the, the entire practice. He's not taking any plays off. Bro, you were you were front and center on Ant Man's dunk on on John Collins. Is that one mm -hmm. of the best in-game dunks you've <laughs> been able to witness in your career? Yeah, that that one's definitely one. That one's one. Uh, I threw the pass to him against the one against Toronto where he went baseline. Oh yeah, and he he dunked that one. Uh, but yeah, Utah was was definitely number one. I I have to say. I never I never seen so much damage get done in one <laughs> dunk from him <laughs> yeah. dislocating his finger protocol. to putting John Collins in concussion <laughs> protocol. It. it was right. so much that happened in there. I've never seen a dunk do so much damage, man. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that one was crazy for sure. I don't top, care top how one. hurt you get. You can't go to concussion protocol. You can't. You can't go. not go yeah, to concussion protocol. It's not like you have a choice. Inexcusable. That's inexcusable. That's how it works. You can't, you can't do that. I'm refusing. Off. Chandler's refusing. <laughs> well, no way. Chandler. Anyways, uh, Rudy Gobert, let's talk about him for a second. Another great season, probably defensive player of the year. But this dude gets more hate than I think most whether it be Twitter, what have you. Why do you think that is? And don't just say he's French, because there are plenty <laughs> of French people that we love. So what, uh -huh. what is the deal? What do you see from your perspective? 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just people on the outside looking in, trying to trying to paint a picture. But uh, Rudy's a great guy, great teammate. Uh, he does a lot for us. He's the main reason, honestly, why we're the number one defensive team in the NBA. Um, but then you also got guys uh, around him that want to compete on the ball um, defensively. So uh, he's definitely the anchor to our defense. Um, so I'm not sure why he gets uh, as much hate <laughs> as he does. Jordan, did his confidence ever, like last year, when people were talking, this could be the worst trade in the history of the NBA. You guys were struggling a little bit. Were the two bigs going to work when everyone's going small? Hmm. Did his confidence ever wither, or did he kind of just stick with it? Now you see the work you know, improve now. Yeah, no, I don't think his confidence ever withered. I think he just needed, uh, you know, a moment to adjust. He came into a new system where Finch, uh, you know, last year we were high wall where Rudy normally plays in a drop. So Finch and, and Rudy kind of had to adjust um, to each other and how they wanted to guard pick and rolls and, and play defensively. And I think you've kind of seen that change this year happen. They tried to blame COVID on Rudy Gobert. I don't think he cared about that. <laughs> Ground zero. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't think he cared about that. Jordan, right. obviously, Mike Conley, one of the most well-respected players across the NBA. You've been a teammate of his. You guys got him at the trade deadline last year for D'Angelo Russell. How integral has he been since he came into the fold? Yeah, he's been huge for us, man. He's uh, just so consistent. Um, he's some. I mean, he's he's somebody we needed um, going forward. Um, D'Lo was great for us, uh, but having Mike, he's been able to kind of uh, pull the reins for for Ant and Cat and and also you know somebody he's played with before, Rudy Gobert, and it's it's just helped us tremendously. He's created a a constant role for everybody on this team. Jordan, you went to USC. We mm -hmm. all know Bronny now has has you know entered the portal <laughs> and then declared the draft. Or, so do you think this is a mistake? Do you think he's just testing the waters? Is he going to come back? Do you think he's going to leave USC? What's your take on Bronny James? Um, it's interesting. I'm not sure. I mean, he's a he's a great player. He's he could be NBA ready. I believe he could help a team out. Um, you know, figure the ropes and in the NBA. Uh, but I also don't think it would be a bad decision for him to go back either to another college or back at USC as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he does, but I think he'll be fine either way he goes. So around here, Jordy, uh, Jordan, I'm sorry, we, uh, we're, we're fashion experts around here, and, and we noticed yeah. that you, to one of your games, you wore a Kendrick Lamar shirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your teammate Leonard Miller wore a Drake shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's going, what's the going, what's going on real. here? Have the, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Has, has uh -oh. sides been picked already? <laughs> Uh, for sure. I mean, Lenny's from Canada, so he's from okay. Canada. I'm from the L.A. area. But, uh, man, I got Kendrick Lamar all the way for sure. Okay, that's <laughs> fair. That's fair. Who do you have, Lou? That's f I, I, I like these shirts. No, no. <laughs> we'll be having, the, we'll be having the debate. I, I like, I like the these question. shirts. You know? I got Drake all day long. What? <laughs> for sure. Really? He's the Lou, goal. do you? I like. I really, really like those. You are shirts. really the like, worst gotta, person ever. You're not even running out. for yeah. office. Um, <laughs> let's talk sneakers for a second. You used to have a podcast called Kicks of Your Life. Um, favorite sneaker of all time? What is it? Favorite sneaker of all time? I'm going with the Cool Gray 11s. That's my favorite sneaker. Okay. Yes, we have. A, I'm, a, I'm, I'm obviously a, looking to you two for approval. I like here. the 11s, but I like okay. the black and white. I'm a Jordan Three guy. That's my. That's my favorite. Okay. 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 Favorite sneaker right now? Favorite sneaker right now, on the court or off the court? Ooh, off. <laughs> off the court, uh, Jordan 1s. I'm going to go with Jordan 1s. That one's good. All white Air Force 1s. Okay. okay. I wear like Chucks and Converse yeah. every day. You wear, well, right now you're you wearing flip flops, flops every day. <laughs> In your so opinion, you sneakers yet. and I do, I do so, I see a lot of these videos on TikTok, and it's always the same answer, so I'm wondering if yours is going to match. The worst or most overrated sneaker? Worst overrated sneaker. Um, man. There's so many. What's crazy is if this went viral, everybody <laughs> said the panda, panda. dunks. And I'm like, I kind of oh, okay. like those. I like yeah, the pandas. I, I, I they're basic, those. they're simple. I wore the pandas last week and I got shame. My, my nephew was like, why you got people the pandas on? murder the pandas. <laughs> I think it's just because people have so many of them. So yeah, it's just, they're just uh, everywhere. Uh, yeah, so, that's what that is. <laughs> I think they're still lovely. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the only things I have. Um, and then talk to me about the Kyries. So you wear them, but do you wear them mm -hmm. when you play Kyrie? You uh -uh, can't. Uh -uh. How does that yeah, work? It's you can't rule. do that. It's, I know. Is that like, a yeah, rule? It's, it's, it's an unwritten rule. Whenever you play uh, somebody that got a signature shoe, you got to switch it up. So, so like what do you got, wear when like you play? Like they got mind control over you a little bit. <laughs> does that even, even with the, like Braun and Kobe and guys like Nobody. that, you can't do it? No. Yeah, DeMar DeRozan religiously wore Kobe's, and when we played the Lakers, he would wear something else. So for that, those games, you just change it up. Does that not mess with you at all? No, not at all. Because, you know, the day before when we have shoot around or the day of, that's when I 
break on the other shoe and, and get it right. While we're on so the fashion, funny. how do we get our J Max shirts? What, what's that yeah. about? That's Want your own line? Stuff. What do you got? Yeah, no. yeah, we got we got the merch at the website, jmacofficial.com. We got shirts. Uh, we sold out of the graphic tees we had, but we got hats, beanies, socks, and uh, some sweatpants. Send the beanies out. There there go. Go. Send there the beanies go. out. For sure. I'll, ha I'll have one sent to y'all. <laughs> Jay, I got to <laughs> ask you, your teammate Ant debuted his new Adidas Ooh. shoe uh, last uh, yes yesterday, last night. Um, yeah. You're the expert. What grade do you give these? Uh, man, these shoes are probably top of the list right now out of everybody that's out there. Uh, we see, I've seen some of the colorways he's got that you guys haven't seen yet. Um, they get in the locker oh, room before they're released. And uh, he's got some, some really dope colorways, man. But this shoe, I, the way it looks, I give it a 10 out of 10. Uh, when I tried it on, it's not fit for me. Um, hmm. It's fit for more of a player with his type of style. <laughs> By the way, we haven't talked. Difference. We saw the Wimby logo, though. We haven't talked about the actual shoe. Yeah, we weren't going to. Uh, <laughs> Have we seen the shoe yet? <laughs> it's it a looks little, ridiculous. It's like a prototype, I think. <laughs> it's I hope. insane. It looks like it's not comfortable. It looks I'll like, a, like a car or like an okay. automobile. Well, at least they got the logo. It's right. sleek. It's cool. Okay, well, we're not going to rip on Wimby right now, Jordan. And I'm sorry about that. Um, <laughs> funniest things good. that happened. This this one's from a few years back. You're on a fast break. The Oklahoma City Mop Dudes. Uh, I don't know that <laughs> I've seen this. Have you been a part of anything? like this or seen something like this when they come out and have a defensive stop? <laughs> <laughs> nah, this was, this was the first time this ever happened. But the thing that made it worse was D'Lo had missed the putback right after it. So <laughs> it made it a little bit worse. But uh, now nah, I had people hitting me up about this and they still do when it when it comes back up on the internet. You must have not uh, saw him. Hilarious. You should have ran his little ass. Oh, oh my God. God. I would have I I I should have Euro stick <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was about man. to say you had to Euro him. They were both they, they out there though. two points. That's got it. Listen. That's a mess I'm up. Running his Jordan was supposed to run one of them over. D'Lo was supposed to run the other one over. That's how that was supposed to go. Yeah. Yeah. Out there. I, I had to add it to my uh, my workout regimen in the summer. Though, so I got <laughs> That's right. funny. <laughs> uh, we just found out all the good stuff because we also have one where you basically get almost kicked in the face just, you know, trying to do a three-pointer. <laughs> Dude. Who is that, Draymond <laughs> or that's the Pacers? <laughs> Yeah, it, it looked worse than slow mo. Draymond's but, uh, on the Pacers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really does. <laughs> uh, well, he, that's a that is. Has that ever happened to you? No, I, you know what's funny? One time in college, I hit a three in the corner, and my teammates were trying to celebrate, and they threw a t and they like threw a towel and whipped me right in the. <laughs> Right, right in the, the back. The, the, Only Chandler. And I literally went down. Like, Only had to call a timeout. Only Chandler. Chandler. I got, yeah, it was bad. That towel can put you out of, <laughs> oh, I got like rat tailed. Jordan, you do not need to send them free stuff. They're both rich, so don't listen to them. They can go to the website and buy it with everybody else. We appreciate the time. Best, best Good luck, of luck. Good luck. Good luck in the playoffs, my brother. Yeah. Appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for having me. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, when we come back, Chandler and Lou pick all of the awards. When Run It Back returns. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. If you don't come into training camp on day one with the mindset of doing everything and taking the steps to towards winning a championship, you don't you don't end up in the Thunder organization. Um, you know, credit to our front office for putting the right guys in in this locker room and uh, you know, in the building with us. Um but that doesn't change the fact of how hard it is and at the end of the day only one team can win so we're gonna you know take all the steps to put us in the position to have the best chance at, at doing that um but we also understand that it's not going to be easy and nobody's just gonna you know let us win it so you know we got to do what we got to do to put ourselves in the best situation and then you know we got to live with that i mean chandler just pointed out who were studs and who weren't <laughs> they're all we went so through good. all the video what was your takeaway from that one <clears throat> my takeaway was earlier at some point in the interview chet was talking about the fact that they're all so similar in ages like the yeah. the, the factor of ego yeah. of of desires of individualistic you know desires that they have it has it's not there with this group they've, they've all kind of come up together and hmm. shea gilds alexander he's about 24 25 years old like and he's shea had good bits Oh, here we go. There you go. That's all he I'm had saying. good bets. Shout out to Lou Will. Shout out. Pat Bev. I all you guys. Shout out. I just said he had good bets. <laughs> you did. I, I, I'll shout you out. I'll shout you out. <laughs> but, but I think the fact that Shea, at whatever he is, 20, 25 years old, he's the OG, the veteran on this team, and the fact that he's able to move in such a carefree, selfless way, it's trickled down to all those guys. 
if you had another player, maybe, you know, who was a little bit more Ooh. driven by goals with accolades, maybe it's not the same trickle-down case, but clearly OKC is building something special. And what's crazy is they, they hopefully they keep this core together because Jalen Williams is an How absolute they not? stud, Chet, SGA, but they have so many assets and picks and everything. They could, they could do whatever they want. Like, yeah. they, there's so much room, and Sam, they, they, they've just done such an unbelievable job developing, building this team. While not even really going through a crazy rebuild, they're set for life. And this they haven't made the their process. big move yet. They haven't even made a trade. They haven't done anything. Like this is crazy. I also like the art in the background, yeah. by the way. My, t my yeah. takeaway is: ha Have I been saying organization wrong? No, that so was a that, Canadian. This is the second time I've heard organization today. Organization. Usually it's Canadian when they say that, that's organization. That's the second time I've heard that. He's today. not Canadian. Huh. Why would he say it like you that? You hear different. Uh, <gasps> Maybe SGA organize. says it like that. Ooh. And it was it's trickle down. 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 Fearless leader there talks like go. that, so now they do too. Mystery <laughs> solved. Let's look at some awards. You guys are boring. You basically agree on all of the following. For the record, we did this separately <laughs> on our own fair time, enough, fair and enough. we did not do this together. Kind of crazy, though, that you agree on, on five of the awards. Malik Monk, does he might not have a chance now since he went out? Maybe I, Nas Reed in there, throw him he, in there? I think he played enough and I, did yeah. enough, but, he still gets but, it. Nas, but Nas Reed is, is, is my close second favorite. So if that were to fall through somehow, that's your, okay. All right, so then let's look at um, some of the ones you might not agree on. Most improved, Chandler. I went with Jonathan Kaminga. I know there was a lot of hype around him last year. He didn't get the minutes that he wanted. He actually even complained earlier this year about the minutes, but now he's looking at, you know, he's played what is it, 74 games this year. He's averaged 16, five, and two. He's kind of showed this franchise that he's their guy moving forward. No matter what happens with Draymond, no matter what happens with Clay, I think he's developed his game enough offensively. He's always had the instincts defensively. He's a freak athlete. So just how, him, how much his game has improved within a year, I think he should win this award, and I think he is the absolute brightest spot piece that they have moving I forward. I like that one. Staying on the OKC train for me, Jalen Williams is going to be my most improved pick. Not so much because of the numbers. I'm, I'm thinking in terms of impact. You know, you look at this Oakland, Oklahoma City team, and we've, we've been raving about um, how young they are, but how good they are. And a lot of these nights, Jalen Williams is either carrying his team or he's the second best player out there. So he's going to be my most improved pick. I like this. I like this. Uh, the big dog, <laughs> most valuable player, Lou, you first. I'm, st I'm sticking with Shea. I'm sticking with SGA. Um, it's, it's, that's, that's my little brother. That's my pick. I'm not changing. I said once last week on a show, I believe I said uh, you did. I was conceding. You and did. Joker. Things change. Interesting. My guy, when he, he might have been the number one seed, Denver was at that yeah, point. Yeah, it was. At that point, because I, I, I felt like it, that was, that was going to be one of the things that was going to be important when it came down to voting. Shea was able to go get that number one seed along with his teammates. I still got Shea. You know what? Team. As adults, we're allowed to get more information I, and change yeah, our minds. I'm changing my mind. That's part of being an adult. Well, I'm, I'm changing my mind back to my we original. We were man enough to admit when we knew Wimby was going to win Rookie of the Year. We Barely. Were, we, were like we, we gave in, but I still got Jokic for everything. You do? Yeah. So, okay, okay, okay. Um, let's do all NBA first team is up first. You guys agree on everything on this one? We did. Wow. First team. Okay, first team agree. One, two, three, four of the five are international players. I love that. Oh, crazy. The game the game's has changing. grown. It's amazing. And it's game is changing. Right, but so it won't be long. Ant-Man will be in there. Jalen Brown will get there. What's interesting is if Joel stayed healthy and reached the threshold, one of these guys would probably be on second team, which is insane to think. Yeah, that is. The seasons they've had. A little bit nuts, by the way. I know the Tatum one is so quiet, but I, I, again, we all know why. Um, Lou, let's do second team then next. What do you got? Um, Ant Edwards, Jalen Brown, LeBron James, DeMontis Sabonis, and Rudy Gobert as my second team. I especially want to show uh, Sabonis some love this year. Um, league leader in double-doubles. For whatever reason, the Sacramento Kings have been overlooked. He's played his ass off. He's done. He's done well. So I think he's deserving of second second team NBA. I think the rest of these guys are, are proven in what they've done. Rudy Gobert is on the second team, being a defensive player of the year, showing him some love as well. The other three guys were obvious picks. Okay. My second team is a little, it's kind of similar. I put Steph Curry in there, just the things he's done to even keep this team <laughs> relevant at all this year. I have Anthony Edwards, I have LeBron, Jalen Brown. I think you have to re reward winning when it comes to these awards. Celtics, for whatever reason, Tatum's not even in MVP talks. They've dominated the Eastern Conference all year long. It hasn't even been close. Jalen Brown's second team, 
and Kevin Durant third team. My only thing is we did this before Jalen Brunson went on this absolute rampage. Uh, I would probably find a way to put him second team how he's finished this season. Okay, that's fair. You can, you're allowed to do that as well as an mm -hmm. adult. Wow, no Gobert though. Interesting. Um, let's go to the third team, Lou. You're up. Um, third team, Steph Curry. I actually agree with Chandler. Jalen Brunson has been on an absolute tear. If I could have switched him out, I would have. I would have had him uh, second team in there. Also, I got Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis. When Chandler mentions the things that Steph Curry has done to keep his team afloat, I think Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, they fit the <laughs> bill for that, and, I, and Anthony Davis as well. See, I had a tough one here. I went with Sabonis on my third team okay. instead of Rudy Gobert, which was a hard one because Rudy Gobert is the catalyst on this defensive end. He is the reason they're the number one defense, so I think he can find his way on here. And I went with Paolo Bancaro other, yeah. with just the season Orlando's had. No one expected them to be good. They damn near got home court advantage. He's been an all-star. He was rookie of the year. He continues to get better and better. I think he deserves to be rewarded for his work all season long. And then I still have, you know, Devin Booker and Anthony Davis. So you there. don't have Gobert, who's probably Defensive Player of the Year on any of them? I think that's the, that's probably the one I missed there, where he has a way to slide in there, probably over Paolo or maybe even Sabonis. But then I also think Jalen Brunson deserves to be second team. I mean, I don't think so. Second best team in the Eastern that. Conference, the way he's ended You're the season with 40 best, plus. Even the second best team as long as we've been on set, Chandler. I'm saying I think he, he I can make a look, case look, that look, he's look, the look. first I team. I just wanted to get her. You know what's weird is that I'm the one up here with the least amount of knowledge. <laughs> it seems like I'm right a lot. What is, you <laughs> Did you, have, did you have Wimby first team or second team this <laughs> year? Not <laughs> yet. I'm trying to be uh, unselfish. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, more uh, Run It Back here on FanDuel TV. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, run it back. The road to the NBA Finals starts now. And new customers on FanDuel can go on their own playoff run with 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose, with any $5 bet. Use your bets on same game parlays, live bets, championship futures, and so much more. No better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Just download the app to get started. FanDuel official sports betting partner of the NBA. Uh, this led into the weekend, and boy, did it get some talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it got a lot of talk. Mm -hmm. This is Allen Iverson's big uh, moment. Dun, 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 dun. The Heisman Trophy. Watch his face. <laughs> <laughs> he grabs his, he suns it. He grabs his head. He sunned it a few times. <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay, so. Why? This what? is just awkward. <laughs> But yeah. in retrospect, we have now seen yeah. a lot of the other statues, and they are all sort of on a, in a smaller scale, if mm -hmm. you will, uh, than we're used to. But his is also kind of, uh, he's doing a crossover, so he looks tiny. Yeah. And, um, originally, I was, I got to be honest, my honest opinion, I was livid. <laughs> I was livid. I thought it was a bobblehead version of, I, was, I said, is this, a, this is, is this him as a kid? Like, a joke. I was, I was really upset and it took everything in me to not say anything publicly okay. until I got more information and I'm glad I did. Smart. Because a lot of the statues are of that size at the practice facility, so. We were worried. Congrats hey, to hey, AI <clears throat> and getting a statue, but I, I was, I was, I originally was upset. I thought, I thought they did him wrong. I, I was thought it upset. was a joke. It's still 10 seconds ago, you just showed me a picture of like there's oh, some yeah. other ones that are just as small, but why not why not just make all those bigger, I make his know. bigger? This is this isn't dope. Like I, from, what, is... from what I understand is <clears throat> they're leasing the land at the practice facility. So it's some type of rule or law that the size of statues that you can have out there. The statue shouldn't be smaller than the actual person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Nah, I didn't, I didn't, so I didn't. Now it's like a trophy. I didn't like it one bit, but, but now, that I, now that head. I know. Yeah. <laughs> what about outside the arena? Yeah, that's well, what I thought it was. They don't own the arena either. That's the hockey's, that's considered Does the Does the face arena. look like him? I mean, let's, yeah, well, let's, 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 I uh, give it, I give it, art. I give it that, but. It's not awful. I mean, it's hard to do too, you know? It's not great. It's not. It's a statue. Give it an A. Give day. it a grade. C minus. Wow. Like it passes. No, I'm, I'm for you. <laughs> C's get degrees. Trust <laughs> I know. Holy. Holy. Come Turn on. Torn. I'm what, torn. Give it a grade, Luke. Because I give it a B. A B. I minus. give it. I give it a B because they're all small and he deserves a statue. He deserves something. Fine. That's that's we he can all. He deserves something bigger. Much deserving. But that is something. Uh, that's gonna do it for us on a Monday. But good news, we're back tomorrow. Enjoy your evening. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back.